Archaeologists have discovered buttons, the wire cage from a champagne bottle, ceramic ware, and the heel of a woman's shoe at a dig to uncover Florence's history at the corner of Coit and Baruti streets in downtown Florence. Post and Courier PD reporter Seth Taylor interviews the archaeologist involved in the dig. Um, I'm Andrew Aga. Um, I have a PhD in anthropology from the University of South Carolina. Uh, I received it in 2020. Um, I've been an archaeologist for about 26 years and I focus mainly on historical archaeology which is uh, contact, uh, European contact uh, with the Americas, particularly South Carolina. Um, I focus on English Empire um, and colonialism uh, so it's 1670 pretty much through the American Revolution and now uh, with projects like the Gamble Hotel uh, my interest pushed to about 1900. You've been doing a lot of work out here the last few weeks. What's the significance of this site? So this location is, uh, is where the Gambles Hotel, uh, originally the Florence Hotel, was constructed uh, in the late 1850s. It was operational in 1860. It was a spot where the, the railroad uh, came through. And so the railroad company decided we should probably get uh, a landmark here. I'm calling it a landmark. And what when, what happened was the railroad stopped right across the street. We're on uh, Baruti. It used to be Front Street. And when the railroad stopped, they would come. The people would come out, and there'd be this giant hotel. And so, um, at the time, uh, based on newspaper uh, reports and, and articles, uh, the Gambles Hotel was the largest wooden structure in South Carolina. Uh, in the 1870s. The hotel was, uh, as far as we know, 20 guest rooms with a large banquet hall and uh, some meeting rooms and some office space. People would come off the train. Uh, there was a passenger shed where they could um, sort of get refreshed. And then they could cross the street and go into the hotel, get a room, um, clean up, and then the plan with the railroad company was they would be able to be enticed to then venture out into Florence or what was just a village mainly at the time and look at lots that the railroad company had set up for sale. And so um, what they had hoped was that people would buy real estate and, and that's pretty much exactly what happened. So if you want to find the place where you could say Florence began, mm -hmm. it's pretty much right where we're standing. So what are some of the things that you found from that, those early years of Florence? Uh, we have a, about a 30 year time period that we're looking at. Uh, based on the archeology span that we've done and the way the soils are in position below the ground, we have uh, a really solid 30 year uh, slice of time uh, with distinct soils that pretty much stop. Uh, so, uh, soil layer that ends uh, as far as deposition people creating the soil with trash and and waste and refuse from the hotel um, about the time of the 1893 fire so uh, we've collected uh, soils um, in arbitrary levels uh, so that we can see if maybe we can separate five or ten year uh, periods of time to understand how the function of the hotel changed, if there are busier years and other years or periods of time. We know that in the 1870s, the hotel lost a lot of its footing as the place to stay when people got off the train, up the track uh, to the east. Um, a larger, fancier uh, passenger depot was built and a better, nicer hotel. And so the Gambos Hotel has its name from the Gamble family, Joseph Gamble, who, who owned it. And the stories are of the time when the hotel burned that it had just been their family residence. Um, we may be able to see in the soils and from the artifacts we've collected that transition from it being a popular place to stay to a not so popular place to stay to just a domestic dwelling hmm. of a great magnitude and size. Now that you've finished up most of your work out here on the site, what are the next steps? So um, today is our uh, second to last day. 
We're doing a lot of site documentation. Uh, we're making sure we've, we get everything on a map um, oriented to the streets. The streets won't move even though there's going to be a big development project here. Mm -hmm. um, so that way um, I can create a site plan uh, with where the brick architecture is and um, where the ruined brick architecture is to try to get a semblance of the footprint of the hotel. Um, we have all of our artifacts in bags um, properly labeled with all the provenience information, the spatial location and depth. And then we take all of that back to our lab. Um, we wash it all with a toothbrush and um, some warm water and uh, get all the soil and the clay and, and all the, the dirt from the past off of it. That stabilizes the artifact. And then we, um, uh, we, we use a lot of sources, a lot of books. Uh, because this is a late site, we'll use things like the Sears Roebuck catalogs mm. from the late 19th century. And we'll try to identify every piece of everything that we found um, and, and date it. Um, some of the pottery is too plain to date properly, but we have other techniques that we can use uh, to say this was probably invented or used after 1880 or maybe after 1860. And that's how we then piece the story together and the changes through time. My name is Sarah Bruno. I just graduated from the College of Charleston. I got degrees in anthropology and archaeology, and I'm now working under Dr. Aga um, on this project here at Gamble Hotel. This is my first um, professional archaeology job. So. Cool. And what are some of the artifacts that you found particularly exciting? Um, I've been really enjoying the clothing items, and um, so we find clothing fasteners, like a hook and eye, which might be on a lady's dress, the sole of a woman's shoe, it has some nails where a wooden sole would have gone in, uh, it's kind of a red rubber material, um, as well as buttons, we're finding prosser buttons, which are white buttons, um, pewter buttons, things like that. The stuff will then go into um, archival uh, safe bags, um, our archival quality um, paper and such is used to transfer our notes onto. Um, our photographs will be archived and um, most of it will probably be uh, uh, stored at the, the Florence Museum. And um, there's been talks to try to get some of the artifacts paired with the archival information and the photographs of the hotel um, into some displays around town and in the museum. Cool.